Reverse launch on pavement with the Barbie turbo. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm just guessing here, but I'm gonna go ahead and say that that's faster. <laughs> We just got a really big box from BMI Carts, which means the Barbie car is gonna be fast again and have more traction than she's ever seen in her life. <laughs> yeah, and maybe be a little bit more controlled. Oh yeah. We got some shiny, super lightweight aluminum wheels. Those, that's the front, so you can see how much wider that's gonna be than what was on there. New rear wheels. Oh yeah. Gonna have maybe too much traction now. <laughs> it's like early Christmas, really early <laughs> Christmas. Yeah. No, it's, it's birthday. It was your birthday just two days ago. There's a new re a rear hub because it's a totally different mounting system for these wheels. So it's just a keyed hub. Very cool. On the axle we have. Compared to that, that's twice as wide at least. <laughs> Finally. Some traction up front. Yeah. I'm sure you guys have noticed that Barbie car has about two inch wide front tires. <laughs> it's not adequate. Man, if only we'd had these for the beach, it would have been so much better. Oh yeah, these things, like literally we can't even turn. Yeah, and they're pretty close. They're just a little bit larger in diameter, so we might have to redo our fenders, but. Grind hard crew. Grind Hard Crew, today's a really cool day because we have our first legitimate professional on the channel. Our friend Casey's here, trying to help us out with really some uh, engine <laughs> stuff. So what do you do professionally, Casey? I work on Harley Davidson for a living. Do a little bit of everything from uh, engine rebuild, uh, even just services and dyno tuning and performance work otherwise, so. Ha, <laughs> performance work on it. <laughs> so you're the guy for the job. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah. Well, it runs exactly like it did before, so we didn't do any permanent damage out of the ocean. That's good. Um, the bad news is it still runs like crap. Yeah. So I think we're going to try and resolve the issue bef without the turbo on it. If we can solve that, that'll be a step in the right direction, oh, yeah. tuning it once the, tur once the turbo's back on it. So. Definitely. Well, I think we're uh, gonna start by pulling the carburetor off of it and uh, see what's going on there. Maybe uh, play around with the jetting a little bit, so. See if we can change something. <laughs> yeah. Try something, see what happens. <laughs> So you drilled out the jet bigger and it got worse? Yeah, so we're gonna try and go in the other direction, just trying to make sure this is as clean as we can get it, so the solder will take to it. And this is all because we don't have the right jets, but we can make it work. <laughs> so how far down are you going? Uh, we were going down six thousandths from what it was stock originally. Originally, I shouldn't say stock. We might have to do this process all over again when we get the turbo on there, but I really wanna just get it running properly without the turbo so that we know what that issue is. If it turns out to not be jetting, then we need to figure that out. Well, just that there's a little slide in here that lifts up and down and it allows more air to go in. And uh, there's a needle on this slide that controls the uh, your part throttle, anything from about quarter throttle, uh, maybe even eighth throttle up to about half throttle or so, and uh, maybe three quarter throttle. And uh, it uh, controls the amount of fuel that goes into the carburetor. So what we're doing now is we're lifting this needle a little bit um, to help the, uh, the mid-range uh, power a little bit. There was a little bit of a stumble when we opened the throttle uh, real quickly, and this should help some of that, so. So we got a carton of almond milk here with this suspiciously sized hole in it. I don't have any proper gasket materials, so we're gonna see if this works.
Basically, we've taken it all apart. Uh, we changed the jetting and the carburetor a little bit to get running properly before the turbo, just so that we have a good baseline. And then we put it all back together. We cleaned up the these intake pipes a little bit. They were kind of rough around the edges. We Casey uh, took the die grinder to them and smoothed them out, basically poured it and polished it. <laughs> um, and then we made some gaskets, uh, got better bolts that have lock washers so nothing will rattle loose because that was a problem. And then I put a banjo, made a new banjo bolt with a smaller orifice so it should restrict the oil flow at least a little bit. So other than that, it's basically the same as it was, but we're not on a beach trying to race and we can actually take time to tune it a bit. <laughs> Nothing's blown up yet. It revved pretty decently. Better than before. Yeah. Well, let's go steal the boost gauge from my Subaru so that we can find out what's happening with it. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty funny taking a boost gauge from a perfectly fine car to use in a Barbie car though. <laughs> yeah. Look how, look how perfectly it fits in there. Awesome. Flawless. Ready for the first test with boost gauge installed. Oh yeah. I mean, for free revving. Yeah, it'd make more under load, right? Yeah, it should make more boost under load. Well, I guess we clear out some space and do another uh, North Idaho dyno tuning. <laughs> All right, we got our North Idaho dyno set up. The, bu the tires are bubbling molten. Oh, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, right at the bottom of the turbo where this housing, where the intake housing meets the, uh, what's the centerpiece called? Whatever, where it meets the centerpiece there at the bottom, it's leaking a little bit out there and blowing a little bit of air. This is the inside of our tiny turbo. For yep. all you guys who want to see that swag. Yeah, it looks pretty sweet. So the problem is this seal here is stupid. It's a very poorly designed thing because these bolts are so tiny and they're just into such little amount of aluminum that you can't really get them that tight. And all it is is like this little tab. It's just not that, like, there's not a lot of clamping pressure and they're just relying on this gasket sealer to keep it sealed, so. ready to test the turbo again. We found a little tiny O-ring, well not that tiny, but an O-ring that we stretched out to like its maximum stretch and got it around the uh, thing here and stuck it in there. We're thinking that might seal a lot better than uh, the gasket sealer. But... consumption problem dealt with. It's not blowing oil through the turbo anymore. Um, we've got the sputtering problem dealt with. Surprisingly, we had to make the jet smaller by like two sizes. Everyone was like, oh, you gotta make a bigger jet because it's turbocharged. Well, it's not creating enough boost for that to really matter at this point. And it turns out the sputtering at the top end, it was just running too rich. 
So we've got those major problems taken care of. It's not leaking any pressure around any of our gaskets. So it turns out that almond milk containers make a good gasket material. Um, and uh, it's running pretty good. So we just need to get it back out on the road and do a real test, see how it actually runs. It seems like it maybe revs a little bit slower with the turbo on there because it takes a while for it to spool up. But with the sputtering gone and with maybe a couple pounds of boost at the top end, we might get some more top speed. So next stop is put on the new wheels and tires and then do a top speed run. Yeah, I think so. The doggos are pretty tired and their paws are even bent the same way right now. Doggos, is it time to send it? <laughs> huh? Is it time to send it? <laughs> So Ethan finally got these uh, tires beaded. What did that take? <laughs> <laughs> well, I kind of thought maybe I was gonna blow my head off, but I didn't. <laughs> so you read some forms, what did the forms say? Um, people were saying it takes up to 135 PSI to seat the beads on these things, which is insane. Um, and uh, most people were saying they used a tire ring, which is like a big piece of sheet metal that wraps around the tire with a bolt to clamp it tight to probably, you know, avoid it exploding. Um, well, I don't have one of those, and I didn't feel like making one. So, uh, the only real bit of information I had was that people were saying getting in warm helps, and then someone suggested taking a torch and heating up the inside of the wheel a little bit, and that accomplishes two things. It gets the rubber nice and soft so it'll expand more, and uh, as the heat spreads throughout the wheel, it heats up the air inside the tire and increases the pressure very gradually. So that's what ended up working. Um, it was still kind of scary. Put a torch <laughs> to a tire with over 100 PSI in it. Yeah. Uh, but it did eventually go boop and squirt out a bunch of uh, WD-40 that was in there to lube it up. There you go. Yeah. So the plan is mount these bad boys take Barbie to the streets and try to hit a new top speed run now that the turbo's running right before it gets dark. And right now it looks like uh, that. So we've gotten a lot of comments saying Barbie car looks like a Mario Kart. And now with these go-kart wheels and tires, it really looks like a Mario Kart. Well, we got the wheels on, we fitted the body a little bit better so it's not rubbing, and we still have a little bit of daylight left, huh girl? Yeah. <laughs> you, the girl and I were working on the bus all day, so <laughs> she's kind of finishing up while we rush and do this. She's the best, you. Launch on pavement with the Barbie Turbo. Oh yeah! <laughs> Send it. I'm just guessing here, but I'm gonna go ahead and say that that's faster. <laughs>
thing I have a hunch about is the turbo spools really good right now. Like you can really hear it. Like. Uh oh. Something sounded pingy. Yeah. Shoot. Well, I don't know what's going on, but we're done for today. Oh yeah. So after the test drive last night didn't work out well, we uh, blew out the gas lines, thinking that there might be something clogging it. Which you, it turned out to be running just fine after that, so. Yeah. But uh, I was just doing some testing and. Um, doesn't really sound like it's uh, super great. I can have the head off of this thing in no time flat because I've literally had this engine apart more times than I can count. Only once in the Barbie car, but when it was my dirt bike back when I was a teenager, I was constantly working on it and breaking it. Barbie might have blown up. No. We'll see. It's possible. Yeah. She's playing hard to get it. Yeah, she never quite wants to work for us. See that right there? Yep. That's a little tiny piece of something stuck in it, which could very well be a piece of turbo turbine. All the rings are still intact. The ring land top is not broken. Yeah, that part's all good. That's got to be a piece of the turbo, huh? Probably, but I don't know. So upon deconstruction and reconstruction. Engine's fine. Turbo, not so much. <laughs> this little nut is supposed to be on here. When I uh, pulled this side of the housing off, that nut was just sitting in there. Luckily, it didn't go through the turbo and into the engine because that probably would have caused some damage. <laughs> um, and I, very much doubt that it's anything that we did that made it come off. I think it's just that this is a really cheap, crappy eBay turbo. And uh, the nut just decided to come off for no reason and destroy the turbo. <laughs> It's loud. <laughs> subscribers that have been watching for a while might remember this is the place we did our last speed run and got into the race with the Honda Odyssey but this time we're expecting to put down a much higher top speed we're hoping anyway <laughs> yeah we got 70 last time 69 uh, 72 was yeah our absolute top speed mm-hmm um, so there's a few things that should allow us to get a better top speed this time. One being um, better tires, so it's not terrifying. Two being these are slightly larger diameter, so the gearing should be a little bit different. And three being it's actually running right, hopefully. It revs to red line now instead of sputtering out at the high end, which obviously that's where our top speed comes from. So that last couple hundred RPMs might actually get us a few more miles an hour. So oh yeah. Time to find out. <laughs>
Well, Ethan's been out of sight for a while now. My best guess is he either went for a joyride because it was so much fun, or he broke down. Given the Barbie car's history, I'm going to go with the latter. No idea. Just won't start? Yeah. I came down here, turned around, revved it, dumped the clutch. It just went, Brad! just died right off the start. And now it won't even try to start. So we have tested the engine by now and there is no spark. So it's an electrical problem. So we will be redoing <laughs> the Barbie engine once again and giving you guys a real speed record. So stay tuned for that thing. sweetest outlooks in North Idaho, I reckon. And it's got a pretty fun road to get there too. Yeah. And we're with our friends Michael and Emily. And they're in the Jeep. Now everything. I should have known better than to uh, wear my nice shirt camping. This is the girl's first time at Spine Cup. I'll show you, girl. Come on. sun is like reflecting underneath the clouds right now. That is so cool. So this is the girl. Her name's Mariella. She does have a name. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Believe it or not. Oh, look at sunset. Wow. Wow. I've been trying to bring her here for like a year. Yeah. Hello. Finally did. You like it, girl? Love it. <laughs> Don't you? <laughs> Wesley's in camper mode. <laughs> the girl's in sleep mode. <laughs> and we are out of propane. So there will be no coffee or hot chocolate this morning, but we get to check out the view. The view's been different every single time I've been here. 